There's one other technology that I want to mention that is being looked at as a potential silver bullet, and that's what we call desalination. Desalination means basically desalting, taking the salt out of salty water like the ocean or out of salty underground water that's stored in groundwater aquifers, running it through a technological process called desalination and turning it into fresh water. Now, that sounds like a wonderful way to, to bolster our water supplies, and it is. Under certain circumstances, when, when most of your other options are no longer available, it can really be a lifesaver in terms of water supply. And so a lot of coastal cities are turning to this as a means of supplementing their, their natural water supplies. Now again, the challenge with desalination is one, it's extremely uh, energy intensive, which means that it's very expensive. And so we're really not using desalination for lower value uses, such as um, irrigating a lot of crops. We use it primarily for industrial water supplies or for urban water supplies where the users of that water can afford to pay the large cost, the big cost of that water. And how much is that big cost? Well, it can be 10 times or more expensive than other ways of accessing water, such as diverting water from a local river or pumping water from a local groundwater aquifer. Desalination presently accounts for only about one to 2% of the total water use um, in the world presently. Much of that desalination, desalination is taking place in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has built more than 30 large desalination plants and understandably the, the Saudis don't have a lot of other options. They don't have perennial rivers flowing across the surface of that country. And they have been very dependent upon their groundwater aquifers, but they realized that they were pumping their groundwater aquifers so fast that that wasn't going to be a long-term solution as well. They were seeing that they were no longer going to be able to pump groundwater literally in the next few decades. And so they had to turn to something else. They didn't have any other options. And so desalinization makes sense in a country like Saudi Arabia that, that has run out of its other options. Now, interestingly, the Saudis are, turning, are starting to build desalination plants that run entirely on solar energy. And if they can get the cost of their energy production using solar down to a reasonable level, that water may become more and more affordable and therefore useful for a lot of different things that the Saudis are dependent upon for, for their water supplies. There are a lot of coastal cities that are now giving, that are now investing in the technology of desalination, um, particularly coastal cities where uh, you have a large major city and for various reasons they are bumping up against the limits of their local water supplies. Um, it, may not, it may no longer be affordable or available to them to import water from further inland areas. And so now they're taking a serious look at whether or not they can turn ocean water into fresh water. And that makes a lot of sense for many cities. Um, it, uh, obviously the ocean is an abundant source of water, virtually limitless from the standpoint of our needs for water. Um, and, and I think for, for a lot of these coastal cities, um, this is probably going to be the next best option. Um, now, there's a couple of caveats to that though. One is that a lot of these cities, when they start to really look hard at the cost of desalination, which can be very high because it requires so much energy, and, they start, and a lot of these cities are starting to realize that there may be other ways, at least in the near term, over the next couple of decades, to, instead of trying to bolster their water supplies, maybe switching to a very different strategy, and that is to lower their need, to lower their demand for water. And so we're seeing a number of very progressive cities now that are really doubling down on water conservation measures. And so they're doing all sorts of things to try to use less water within the cities. One of the most important things they can do is to change how much water they're using out in outdoor landscaping. So they're changing the vegetation, the plants, the lawns that they're using and going to outdoor landscaping that's more 
adapted, more appropriate for their local climate. In fact, that much of which may require no supplemental irrigation at all and can, and can thrive on the natural rainfall that's available to those plants. Um, there are other things that they can do with um, switching out the plumbing fixtures in homes and in businesses to utilize more efficient toilets, more efficient uh, washing machines, more efficient dishwashers, and overall just use a lot less water. There is potential for cities to use easily 25 to 50 percent less water um, and, and that can be a, a really smart strategy in many, many ways because it's much more cost effective and it's also much less environmentally damaging because you're not having to go to other sources, new sources of water, um, and further depleting those, those sources um, to a greater extent and perhaps not having to utilize the technologies like desalina desalination, which require a lot of energy which has a lot of spin-off environmental consequences such as the production of carbon emissions in the production of that energy. Those carbon emissions, of course, are having a bad effect um, on changing our climate. So in my consulting and advising to cities all around the world, I'm quite emphatic about the need to first and foremost invest as heavily as you can in trying to be more water conservative, more water efficient. That is the most sensible, cost-effective next means of water supply. And then only after you've exhausted the potential of water conservation, then should you go to other strategies to try to bolster your water supplies. A few years ago, I was having a conversation with my father. My father lives in San Diego, California, and, uh, and uh, he's always trying to engage me in conversation about water and he wants to learn as much as he can from me about, about water. And he's, and he's quite frustrated and perplexed about the fact that um, in San Diego, as well as in many other cities within California, and in fact, many other cities around the world, in fact, about half of all cities in the world are now facing water shortage challenges. So he's not alone. But, but one of the questions that he asked me, he said, Brian, um, it seems to me that we need to stop letting all of that water run out to the ocean. He said, if we could just capture that water, if we could just build some more reservoirs and let that water get out, waste out to the ocean, that seems to, seem to him to be um, a very sensible thing to do. And what I tried to explain to him was that that water on its way to the ocean and once it reaches the ocean actually provides a lot of services and a lot of values that a lot of us don't understand it and therefore we take it for granted or we think that it's um, not serving you know, any value to us. And so specifically as the water's flowing down our rivers, it's providing habitat for a lot of other species that depend upon those, those types of freshwater ecosystems. It supports tremendous bird life and frogs and fish. And in fact, we, we enjoy a lot, of those, um, a lot of those values and a lot of that wildlife uh, we fish for it, we go bird watching. Um, it's a pleasure to be able to walk uh, in, um, within our cities to have cool, shady places uh, where trees line uh, river systems and we can go for a nice hike and find shade on a hot summer day. And so there's a lot of reasons why we depend upon these park-like settings um, for our recreation and for other values. And then once that water flows downstream, a lot of it moves into coastal estuaries, places where fresh water mixes with ocean water. And it turns out those estuaries are among the most productive ecosystems on our planet. They are biological engines that produce um, much of the fish and shellfish that we then subsequently depend upon for our food supply. And in, in fact, if we, if we cut off all of that fresh water that's moving down our rivers and getting into the areas, the coastal areas and these estuaries, we would really damage a lot of our food security. We would really reduce the food supply that those processes of fresh water inflow to the coast are providing to us. And so we need to be really aware of, knowledgeable about these ecological processes, these biological processes when we're making decisions about where we should go to capture the next buckets of water that we're going to need to use on our farms or in our cities.